Welcome to the second BWTF.com haul video. Thank you all who viewed my first video and provided generous feedback. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as the last. Let's get started. Our first segment will take a look at the most recent Robots in Disguise acquisitions. Robots in Disguise is the new Transformers television program airing on Cartoon Network starting March 2015 in the US. The story focuses on a team of Autobots on Earth trying to capture escaped Decepticon criminals. The first item in this haul is One Step Changer Fix-It from Robots in Disguise. The One Step Changers were a segment of the Transformers line first introduced in Age of Extinction. This segment allows figures to go from one mode to the other at rapid speed. This could be one step. In some cases, it's more like two steps. But either way, it's a quick, what they call magical, transformation. Fix-It is a key character in the Robots in Disguise series because he's the Autobot who's going to help the others learn about the Decepticons and give them the gear they need to capture them. This particular figure is the first time Fix-It has been on toy store shelves, and it also gives us the first look at his vehicle form, which appears to be some type of Cybertronian drill. Turning the package around, we get a look at how the Robots in Disguise packaging is laid out. First, of course, we have the quickie instructions here and official photography here. But the big thing that they're trying to push this year is downloading the Transformers app and using it to scan symbols that are printed onto the toys. This then allows you to unlock characters and features in the game that's built into the app. The rest of the packaging is devoted towards legal information and safety information, uh, which is not ideal because we lose tech spec space, uh, but it is what it is, and honestly, most people don't keep the packaging if you're going for a one-step changer anyway. Next up, we have one-step changer Grimlock. Now, Grimlock is an interesting anomaly in the Robots in Disguise universe. Robots in Disguise is the sequel series to Transformers Prime, which of course ended with the Beast Hunters miniseries. Beast Hunters had a comic book by IDW Publishing set in the same universe where Grimlock was actually based on his Fall of Cybertron self, uh, and he led a team of Dinobots there on an adventure, and then after that adventure, they were last seen rebuilding a city where Grimlock would rule over all. So, what does that have to do with this guy? Well. My personal pet theory is that this guy is not that Grimlock. He is a separate character, possibly who idolized that Grimlock and decided to take on his alt form, or one similar to it, and his name. So I think what we may have in this Grimlock here is the ultimate fanboy, something which you know only pops up every now and then in Transformers lore. That's my personal theory, not official, but I think it's a fun one. Now, something that jumped out at me when I first picked up this figure is this section here. If you look carefully, his arms and his legs are kind of attached by a bar in the center. These types of design sacrifices generally need to be made uh, when you're doing something like a one-step changer where a whole bunch of parts have to move at the same time to uh, facilitate the transformation. So it's not a huge deal to me. To some people, it may be a bit of a deal breaker. Uh, but I wanted to call that out because when I saw it on the shelf, it just jumped right out at me. Now, taking a look at the back of the packaging, once again, we have instructions, download the app, scan your symbols, play our game. And I think it's a wonderful way to give kids something to play on their iPads or their tablets, as well as having an action figure in their hand. Let's face it, um, it's not the 80s anymore. Kids aren't just playing with action figures. They're also playing with video games. I see my little cousin who's like seven, eight years old already playing on tablets along with his figures. So it's a nice way for them to integrate that play feature. And finally, of course, we have all the legalese here in various languages. Again, as an 80s fan of Transformers, I mourn the loss of the tech specs, but I totally get why they're gone. Um, it's cost issues and, and, and a whole bunch of other issues on top of that. But, of course, the best way to get to know the character, watch the show. Our second segment looks at some older products from the Creo line. Creo was introduced in 2011 and is the second time Hasbro has attempted to make a brick-based building toy line. The first was the failed Built to Rule series released during the Unicron trilogy. Even though Creo's not as big as it once was, I'd argue that it's far more successful than its predecessor. Kicking off the Creo portion of this haul is Micro Changers Combiner's Computron. Now, Computron was a character first introduced in the Generation 1 series made up of five Autobots known as the Technobots. However, 
Microchanger combiners generally only use four characters, so a lot of the combiners we knew from generation one wind up getting reduced by one team member. So let's see who they decided to keep intact on the back of the packaging. First we have Afterburst. Now Afterburst is actually not the name of the original character. The original character was named Afterburner, but of course for trademark purposes they tried to find a name that was close enough. Next up we have Lightstorm, who like Afterburst uh, fell victim to trademark loss, so his original name was Lightspeed. Strafe and Scattershot, on the other hand, managed to both keep their Generation 1 names intact. However, there's something interesting here to note. Scattershot here is spelled with an E. Now, that is actually the spelling that was used in Generation 1, but for many years the term Scattershot was used with an O in place of the E. So it's really kind of cool to see the original spelling, the original trademark back. Now you may wonder, here are four guys, where's the fifth guy? The fifth guy is Nose Cone, and Nose Cone was released as part of Wave 3 of the individually packaged Micro Changers series. So it is possible for you to go out there, find Nose Cone, and reunite him with his fellow team members. Shipping alongside Computron was Menasaur. Now, I say was, and I speak in the past tense, because Menasaur and Computron were actually part of a later wave of 2013 microchange combiners that were kind of hard to find and wound up largely going to discount retailers like Marshalls and Big Lots. And in fact, this particular Menasaur, uh, I actually wound up finding an extra at a Big Lots near me only about a month ago. So they're still out there. Uh, if you're interested in these, keep an eye out for them. Menasaur here is based on the Generation 1 combiner made up of the Stunticon team. This was a significant team because back then we didn't have legions of Decepticon race cars and trucks running around. Nope. These guys were the first. These were the first Decepticons introduced in Generation 1 who kind of took the Autobot formula as their own, becoming race cars, sports cars, and trucks. Like I mentioned before with Computron, they reduce each a team by one member for these micro changers combiners releases. So let's see who made the cut. First, we have Decepticon Drag Strip. Drag Strip, you'll notice, has the word Decepticon and the words drag and strip are together instead of being separate. This was a necessary compromise for trademarking purposes. On a similar vein, Breakdown had to have the word Decepticon put in front of his name so he could also keep the trademarks. Now, not so lucky. Motormaster, who became Motor Breath for this release. Not the greatest name in the world. Um, however, for the Combiner Wars version of Motormaster, the, he did get his original name back, which is appropriate for the leader of the team. Finally, we have Dead End here, and Dead End is the name that has kept the most intact out of all these guys. His is the name that is still the same as it was in the original series. Who's the fifth guy? Well, the fifth guy that was left out was a character named Wild Rider. At least, that's what he was known as in Generation 1. In the Microchanger series, he became Breakneck and was released as a single-packed figure in Microchanger's Wave 4. The last portion of this haul is an unexpected one, Angry Birds Transformers. This cute mashup series takes place in a storyline where the AllSpark has fallen into the world of the Angry Birds, giving Transformers-based armor to several characters, creating Autobirds and Deceptahogs. It's a fun mashup, and this line is actually a Toys R Us exclusive in the U.S., and this series of figures is from the second series known as Deceptahogs Revenge. Kicking off the Angry Birds Transformers portion of this haul is Grey Slam Grimlock Bird. Now, it doesn't say so on the packaging, but this is actually the Angry Bird known as Hal, wearing Grimlock-inspired armor. Uh, what about it is Grimlock like? Well, mostly the design of the chest and the fact that he kind of looks a little bit like a T-Rex uh, with that big snout and so on and the claws in front. I know it's a bit of a stretch, but roll with it. Uh, he transforms into a four-wheeled vehicle, which kind of looks like it was originally meant to be a motorbike in the original promotion art for the game, but later wound up just becoming more of a four-wheeled car. Uh, it does look kind of silly and cute, which are, I guess, the two words you can use to encapsulate the entire Angry Birds Transformers concept. Gray Slam Grimlock Bird here is a telepod, as you see on top of the packaging. So what is a telepod? 
in the Angry Birds game, you can uh, run through environments and destroy enemies and shoot, but they're shooting back. That means your armor level starts depleting and your health starts depleting. So during the course of the game, you need to replenish. Normally, you can do that by using coins that you're in the game, but you also need your coins to upgrade your character. So what do you do? Well, if you have these action figures, you can use them to replenish your armor without having to spend coins. How do you do that? Well, if you check out this little device here, which looks like the Matrix, that allows you to scan this figure into the game. And the result is you replenish your armor, and if you haven't yet unlocked the character in the game, you can play the character temporarily. However, it does not permanently unlock the character. You still have to do that within the game. I was a little disappointed to learn that, but it's okay because I wound up unlocking them over time anyhow. Taking a look at the back of the packaging, you'll see we have the instructions here on the left on how to scan the figure into your tablet. And then up here, we have Gray Slam Grimlock Bird represented in his two modes. And then here we have the co-cells. So we have a battle pack, which is a versus pack featuring Auto Bird Jazz versus Deceptahog Brawl. And then we have the individual racers, which are single packed figures, Thundercracker Pig and Dark Megatron Pig. Next up, we have Dark Megatron Pig. Now, Dark Megatron Pig is actually the character known as King Pig, wearing Megatron-inspired armor. Nope, he's not G1 Megatron, he's not Beast Wars Megatron. What he is, is based on Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, who could transform into a tank. This is perhaps one of the most reused models in the game. Uh, he's used for Bludgeon, he's used for two different Megatrons, and he's used for Brawl. So I uh, expect to see a lot more of this guy in toy form. This is actually the second time this guy has come out in toy form. This particular sculpt was already released as Bludgeon in the first wave of figures. If you check out the back of the packaging, you're going to see something very similar to Gray Slam Bird's uh, Grimlock's packaging. We have the instructions on scanning into the app, and then we have the section featuring the figure in the packaging, and then the other co-cells. So in this case, once again, the battle pack and the individual racers with Thundercracker and Grimlock called out back here. And now for the last individually packaged racer figure set in this assortment, it's Thundercracker Pig. Thundercracker Pig is just a basic minion pig in G1 Seeker inspired armor. Uh, he has very G1 features including the vertical stabilizers and horizontal stabilizers in the back in vehicle mode of course a nose cone, but he is meant to be able to race. So the, the vehicle mode of the toy does have four wheels that it rests on. Uh, Thundercracker Pig is one of the most recent additions uh, to the game as part of this Deceptahog's Revenge campaign, which was an update to the app that was released recently. Looking at the back of the packaging, once again, we have instructions on the left side. We have the character featured on top and what he transforms into, and then the co-cells, the battle pack, and his fellow racers. And finally, we have our battle pack, which is a versus pack featuring Auto Bird Jazz versus Deceptahog Brawl. Now, this is kind of an interesting team up here because these two did face each other in a key scene in the first Transformers movie uh, way back in 2007, and I don't think this placement of these guys together was accidental. Uh, this also is a set that features one Redeco and one new figure. The new figure is Autobird Jazz. Now, what's interesting is while in the game, Autobird Jazz transforms into a sports car, very similar to how he appeared in G1, here in toy form, he seems to transform more into something resembling an SUV. The other figure is one you recognize. That is the same sculpt that was used for Dark Megatron, now being used as Deceptahog Brawl. So I warned you earlier that that sculpt was just going to keep appearing over and over again in this, in this line, and there you go. So let's flip this around, take a look. So it's just a wider version of the packaging you've already seen. Left side has instructions on how to scan your telepod, and then on this section here, you have this, the main figures in the set featured, and then you have the co-cells, which are the racers. Of course, this 
is a battle pack, so it's a separate assortment than the racers who are individually packaged. So here you get to see the racers all together in a set. I hope you've enjoyed the diversity of the toys from this haul. You can find Ben's World of Transformers at bwtf.com. Also check BWTF out on Facebook at facebook.com slash bensworldtf. And follow me on Twitter at BWTF underscore Ben. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.